Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Michael and you're watching the Tech for All channel. Uh, when I started it a year, a bit more than a year ago, uh, I did it because of two products mainly. The Bux 3 by MJX, which was my first uh, my first round based on brushless motors. And the T5E, a camera coming from, well, the weird sounding, at least for me, company coming from China, the I. It was one of the first true 4K action cameras which had kind of a reasonable price. And I guess that would explain my curiosity about VI products ever since. This is one of the new models that VI have recently released. It's called the T5 Edge. And while it has some similarities with the T5E, there's a lot which is different. Time to have a look at it. I've always loved these moments, just before the unboxing, wondering whether the wow effect is going to be back. Let's see how the T5 Edge feels. On theory, it should be a great camera. And this stylish box means two things. First, VI are trying to make it look fancy like GoPro. And second, we will have some accessories included. Having a description of each one of them on the package is great. You may notice that there is no frame added and I point to this with the hope that VI would include it in their next models. Everything so far looks solid, well built, with a good taste of style and I could only criticize this weird looking orange 4K stamp which stays next to the LED. It's better off without it. There is a well designed user manual in several languages. And here is the gorgeous T5 Edge. A closer look shows the excellent choice of materials combined with a solid assembly. My old T5E model had numerous drops and has proved to be very durable. I strongly believe that the T5 Edge is no different. Two buttons on the side for menu navigation. The power button is also used for switching between modes and settings via a single short press. And of course the shutter button on top. Under the hood we have a modified Umbrella A12 chipset which can stabilize electronically even in 4K and that is combined with a Panasonic 14 megapixel sensor. A VI tradition is to keep the camera and the battery in the retail box apart. Once we put everything together we're set for shooting. The menus have a lot of common features and a few unique to this camera. The wind noise reduction seems to be the reason for the weird sounding voice from the beginning. Such an option I see for the first time, the idea is great. Turning this option off shows that microphone quality is far from being good, although records stereo. I so much hope it is firmware fixable. Notice that ISO can go up to 3200, that is wow! Some good photo options including long exposure up to 60 seconds, which can turn a dark night image into this. It is shot at only 30 second exposure. For a shot done with such a small lens, it is looking stunning. The rest of the settings are rather boring, exception is the firmware section, I've already updated once and for a product which has been out for just a few weeks, a good indication of support commitment. When speaking with the VI team via Facebook, they seem to be most proud of a few features. The native 4K, the remote control with voice capability, stabilization even at 4K, there is a distortion correction feature which fixes the fisheye effect caused by the wide-angle lens and it is one of the first cameras with aqua mode explicitly designed for underwater experience. I won't be able to test that soon, more likely to bury myself in snow, but that wouldn't be fun. As usual, I do have some remarks. Design-wise, that 4K logo doesn't feel right. I miss the 120 frames per second full HD recording from the T5e. The microphone needs corrections, but I appreciate it records stereo. I haven't said that so far in my videos, but when I sat down to choose footage for this one, in the post-production, I did feel the wow effect. Picture is really good. 
There's something with the color which makes it warm and natural. And no matter what lighting conditions, that camera shoots good. So, how do you like it? Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? Is it better than the T5e? Is it better than some of the other really popular cameras like the Firefly 8s or SJ7 Star? There's the comment section below and I'll start the conversation sharing part of my experience with the VI T5 Edge so far and I hope you're gonna join me there. As usual you will find some links with kind of nice discounts for buying this camera in the description below and as usual a few weeks from now there's gonna be a more detailed deep dive video with this camera. As of now I thank you for watching this one and looking forward to seeing the next. Cheers!